is the prophetic office under attack. That is one thing that I want to actually walk you through to show you the prophets in the Bible. The thing that is also to do with the, what was so very much common with them and also with what we do see today. There are a number of people today who call themselves prophets, but they do not meet any of uh, the qualifications. They do not meet any of the standards of those uh, prophets that we do see in the scriptures. So I want uh, us to look at uh, some of the things here that we need uh, to pay close attention to. You see, a prophet in the Bible were men that were gifted by God to deliver God is revelation to men. And the, the words of the prophets were actually recorded and later were made part of the canon of the scripture. In the Bible, we do have uh, the minor and the major prophets. But what is very important for you and I to understand, some prophets, they didn't write much. And that is to mean that the size of their books were actually small and others were shown many things. But independent of the size of the book, I can actually say to you that uh, just like you see in the New Testament, the book of uh, Philemon and Jude, they are as much inspired as First Corinthians and actually Romans. So that is not for any person to say, you know what, now, since uh, so and so is categorized under the minor, that is to the teaching as far as the theologians are concerned. But before God, they were receiving from the same source. And since they were receiving from the same source, all of them were used of the Lord and their message was very substantial. They were picked in different seasons. They were picked in different time period. And all of them, God used them to fulfill a particular purpose that he wanted to do what? To fulfill. That is very, very important. Now, we need also to understand some of these other things that are very important. That true prophets in the Bible, like Daniel, like uh, Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like Ezekiel, they were students of the scriptures. Daniel was inquiring into to know whether what Jeremiah had said earlier actually had come to pass or it was about to come to pass. They were actually students of the scriptures, which is one thing that is not common, but the prophets in the scriptures were individuals that never put the truth next to error. Those were the genuine ones. And if someone's doctrine was wrong, their prophets would basically be wrong. Now that is to mean that the true prophets of the Lord, their doctrine was right because they were receiving from the Spirit of God. So everything that pertains to their revelatory information was actually of one single source, and that was actually from God himself. So I want uh, to show you that uh, this is one of the offices today that has been misrepresented, having a lot of people that have self-proclaimed themselves. They have actually sent themselves. No one has sent them. They don't meet any standard. They are pop star individuals. They look for the limelight. They are actually over the place. It's all about the promotion of their names, the promotion of their ministries, and they always claim to have the word each and every time, a special word each and every time, a special word, which is not actually a language of the prophets that we do see actually in the writings of the scripture. So I want to show you part of the things that we do see in the scripture and then compare it and then contrast with the so-called prophets today that also belong to the group that is known as the New Apostolic Reformation, where they say that the apostles and the prophets are the one that actually lead the modern-day church, and that is to mean that uh, whatever we do have of those apostles and the prophets that the Lord used to write for us the scriptures, these individuals claim to have the same authority as those guys that uh, the Lord used to write what the scriptures. Remember in the Bible, uh, the nature of the true prophets of the Lord, one thing that was characterizing their ministry, it was persecution. I have taught on several occasions from actually a number of different prophets, but the one I would actually highlight for you today is a man that is known as prophet Amos. When you study something about Amos and how he was sent to the northern kingdom to go and give prophecy up there, 
Something happened in verses 12 of Amos chapter 7. The Bible says, And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go free away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary. It is a temple of the kingdom. So, there were people that were characterized of actually the issue of them being persecuted every now and then, every now and then. It was not a superstar job. And actually one thing that is very important that you can basically consider very much about those prophets, the biblical prophets, the genuine ones. They never asked for the job. They never wanted the job. I want to show you something also from uh, Prophet Jeremiah and say something very brief about Jeremiah and also what he, he went through. When you study the book of Jeremiah chapter 26, this is what the scripture makes very clear for us in verses 8. It says, And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets... And all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. How many do we have in our time today that men have persecuted? Today what they call persecution is when you expose their errors. Is when you talk about their fleecing. Is when you talk about their covetousness. Is when you talk about their greed that they have actually exercised over the poor and the unlearned. It's what they call persecution, that you are jealous of my car, you are jealous of my suits, you are jealous of my, of my people, you are jealous of this and that. So that is to them that is known as persecution. But they are not sound anywhere close. They do not come close to anything that we see as true prophets in the Bible. When you look into the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, 18, some other thing that you can also consider in Jeremiah 18, 18, this is what it says. It says, then they said, Come, let us make plots against Jeremiah. For the Lord shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us strike him with a tongue. Let us not pay attention to any of his words. These were men that always faced outstanding persecution because they had the true word of God. True prophets have the word of God. They do not have a word of God. They had the word of God. And they never always spoke any time they wished to say something. But the moment the message came, whatever they spoke was actually very true. But today, the so-called prophets are celebrity figures. They want to be invited there. They want to be hosted on this radio. They want to be hosted on the other television. They want someone to write about them in a particular magazine. Everything about them, it's glamour, it's limelight. That is not the biblical prophets. Because the standard then has not changed. It is true that many of them are putting on sackcloth and all of that. But I'm telling you, the nature, the character, the behavior cannot be actually different from what would be able to experience today. This level of greediness cannot actually, I don't know even how I can explain it. In the Bible, it's very true that uh, prophets were capable of what? Loneliness, being betrayed. You study what happens in the book of Second Kings. What happened with prophet Micaiah? All of them thought that he was wrong simply because he wasn't a man pleaser. Today, the prophets that do claim to be prophets are actually very good at ERT calling. They are so very much involved in actually necromancy. They are so very much involved in actually clairvoyance. So it's what is very common today. And now they also say that, you know what, the Lord speaks to us. He keeps on giving us actually new revelations. The Bible is very clear, prophets, that we do see in the scriptures those true ones didn't go on prophesying like today. But when they spoke, their word actually was true. Study the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 3 from verses 1 to verse 6. Study Amos chapter 7 and what he spoke against Amaziah, whether it didn't come to pass. But because we are living in a time where a majority of the church folks are gullible, they are not disciples, they are not students of the word of the Lord, any person actually coming around because he has this nice thing, he has the other nice thing. It's so very much easy for people to say, you know what, he is a prophet. So 
where discernment is not in the church is why many of these modern day prophets are being entertained by so many actually undiscerning Christians. True prophets were always seeing things from God's perspective. True prophets in the scripture, God raised them as prophetic voices in actually bad times to warn the people before judgment came. Today what, what they are preaching is actually prosperity gospel, is actually covetousness, it is actually greed, it is actually me gospel, it is actually a self-centered gospel. You can have this, you can have this. Because they themselves are sold out into idolatry, they preach idolatry, they cannot confront the errors of the modern day believers. And actually the church is where it is today because of these modern day prophets. They are not sound in what they teach and they are not sound in their practice. So what do you think can be true of those that do follow them? Majority of the church folks that are following them, they desire the same thing their false prophets do desire. All of them are greedy. All of them are actually with no contentment. They are talking about your best life now. And that is one thing that is very common. And uh, what the Bible teaches that we need to pay close attention to is that uh, when you look at the book of Second, uh, Second Peter makes it very clear like this. It says, but false prophets arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers. So the warning wasn't to the unbelievers, but the warning was given to the mainstream church. That then in the Old Testament, there were so many false prophets. But Peter writes on by the Spirit of the Lord, warning us that many will do what? Will actually come among us. And that is why we say that is the prophetic office under attack? Yes, simply because what is known as the prophetic office today, it is actually a household joke. They are continuing what is not in continuation. They know nothing about the canon of the scripture. When Paul was writing, he made it very clear. And uh, if any person has the wisdom to understand and the knowledge to put things in consideration, Paul writes in Ephesians 2, when he was talking about the sensation of uh, the apostolic office, he also talked about the sensation of the prophetic office. This is what he said in Ephesians 2.20, Build on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. So, it is not only the apostolic office that is in secession, but also the prophetic office. Now, if we say that is the prophetic office under attack, that is what we mean. If we have a continuation of what is seized, of what is not in continuation, is why we have a number of modern day individuals. You see, if God seizes something, if God does not allow something to continue, and then we have another group that continues what God has put to a stop, it cannot be like that that was original. Because it's not being inspired by God. It's not being supported by God. You cannot do something well if God is not in it. You cannot have the excellence of something that God does not call you to do. You cannot perfect in doing something if the Lord has not called you to do it. You cannot articulate things well if the Lord has not called you to do a particular thing. And that's why we are saying that these individuals have made Christianity actually a household joke. There are people that we ought to do what? To separate away from. I want to show you a number of things that you may need to consider when you hear the so-called prophets today. The prophets of the Bible call people to that which was already established. They never pointed people to the new direction. If they pointed people to the new direction, it would not contradict with the rest of the Bible. Today, you hear the common anthem, I see something. 
The Lord has revealed something to me. The Lord has shown me this. You're going to Dubai. You're going to China. You're going to begin to, to actually uh, import things from Guangzhou. You're going to go to Turkey. You're going to build this and this. You're going to, to buy this and all of that. All of that nonsense today is what is being called prophecy. It has nothing to do with the agreement of the rest of the scriptures. It does not edify. It does not bring comfort. It does not in any way meet any standard of what is known as the biblical prophecy. But today, simply because people have shunned away from seeing the canon being closed to always wanting to have a new thing, a new revelation and all of that, they do not know that they are under the spell of First Timothy chapter 4, beginning with verses 1, which says that now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. The faith, the word faith is the same thing as doctrine, the same thing as instruction, it's the same thing as teaching, by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons. So, People are under the teachings of demons saying that they are being prophesied upon, that they are being given prophecies, which prophecies do not align with anything that we do have as biblical example of what is known as sound prophecy from the scripture. You see the danger. You see, according to the Bible, when you look at the different individuals that received visions and dreams, the Bible is so very much clear that not everyone who received revelation, everyone that had a dream or a vision, was a prophet. On several occasions, Pharaoh received visions, he received dreams. Abimelech, in Genesis 20, he also received, actually, a revelation. But I'm telling you, that didn't mean that Abimelech was a prophet of God or Pharaoh was a prophet of God. No way. During the time of, uh, of Gideon, these were the very things that were actually happening. You remember very much well that uh, when one actually follows what we do have in the scripture, one cannot go wrong. Scripture does not allow all let prophets to practice. Scriptures does not allow all let anyone that calls himself a prophet to practice like Bethel School of Ministry teaches that practice makes perfect. That if you have no any prophecy, you can make it up. That is what they do. But I'm telling you, when we talk about the prophetic ministry, it was a revelatory office. They were receiving direct revelation from God, is what basically those individuals had. They were not just sharing their own ideas. But the Lord himself revealed a number of outstanding things to those what? To those individuals that were actually prophets. When we study the scriptures very well, everything that concerns what we call a one receiving a, a direct revelation, it was always God giving them things. It was not them concocting. It was not them actually sharing their own ideas. We shouldn't allow statements like the Lord has told me. I see something. I hear a sound. The New Testament writing is complete and the Bible is not what? Any open canon. According to the book of Ephesians, everything is made so very much clear. This is what it, it shows us. Ephesians chapter 3. In fact, let me begin in verse 4. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it is now been revealed to the holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. New Testament apostles, they agreed with the New Testament prophets that whatever was hidden in other previous generations was made known unto them and there wasn't anything new that the Lord was going to reveal other than what he had entrusted the apostles and the prophets, which later on became our canon. Prophets or the office of the prophet is not a continuing office. The error in the body of Christ is actually one thing that has to be exposed and killed by the truth. 
Just like an infection in the body needs an antibiotics, we are not to know someone by their ability, but by their fruit. Look at people like uh, Rick Joyner. How many false prophecies have they given? Jack D. Ray. How many? The late Peter Wagner. There are so many others that have gone ahead to claim a number of things that were not anywhere close to what we know as people that were led by the Spirit of the Lord. Any prophet claiming prophetic authority today in our New Testament is one trying to rebuild what is already built. Remember, I read for Ephesians 2.20. It's very clear that the church is already built onto the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ being the chief cornerstone. So that office of the prophets and the apostles is not a continuing one. The false prophets cause a lot of division since they compete among themselves. Who of you does not agree with that? Who of you does not see that today? Everyone is promoting his name. Everyone is promoting his ministry. It's all about me, 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 me. We call it the me gospel. And uh, they share their own ideas. But I'm telling you, if it was sourcing from the Spirit of the Lord, the competition among the modern day prophets would not have been there. In fact, Daniel quotes from actually J Jeremiah. Jesus quotes a lot to do with the Old Testament. And many that came afterwards, they were quoting others. They said the same things that were actually said by those that came before them, which we are not having today. Why? Because an individual believed in himself. He studied marketing psychology. He got some people around who believe in him, who are also greedy as he is. And then they say, let us begin. You are a prophet now here today. They even have categories that you've never heard of. I hear major one. Major one, you can imagine, major one. Then others only fronting their names. I am Alpha Lookout. To do with what with your name? You hear Ubert Angel who say that Jesus was not human. There are many that teach a number of bogus things, but with a lot of outstanding followers. False prophets like Janice and Jimbris, as we see them in the book of 2 Timothy 3.8, they use their signs and wonders to draw people away from God and they withstood those that taught the truth. And it's what we are having today. The same character of Janice and Jimbris in the book of Exodus chapter 7, it is the modern day clear example for many of the so-called prophets of our time that use a lot of clairvoyance, grave soaking, witchcraft, and then they come out sleeping with a number of women that are not actually their wives. And now they say that that is the Lord, that is the spirit of the Lord. After giving a number of outstanding sacrifices to the devil and then lobbying and looking for power, and now they say that they are being used by the spirit of the Lord. Study the book that is known as the Church Mafia. It is a book that was written by a minister in South Africa who narrates and who mentions, who knows a number of different people that he was working with from Nigeria, from Zimbabwe, from Congo, where they were looking for powers to show people that they were indeed used of the Lord, but with the aim of collecting, with the aim of actually gaining riches from the majority of the actually gullible Christians. Any person that does not exegete scriptures, that does not exposit scriptures, and he calls himself a prophet, is a false prophet. Today we need the clear explanation of scriptures. And if there is no clarity of the scripture, we do not see the use of such an individual. When we see the new prophets operate outside the written word and give new and unknown meanings to the word, they have indeed become illiterate to the expounding of the truth. Hence, when this happens, many turn to signs to validate their ministries. And that's what we do have today. People are validating their ministries by the signs and wonders instead of putting sound doctrine first. Any witch doctor can put on a suit and give you a show and then you, you, you might end up saying that you know what is being led by the Lord. How was Janice and Jambres able to do what they did? They were actually enchanters. They were witch doctors. They were sorcerers. But many of the things 
Moses and Aaron were told to do before Pharaoh. They did until actually God put a limit to them when it came to actually to the lies. And they could not actually get out of uh, the dust of the earth. So the character of Jennings and Jembris is what we are seeing today. With the likes of uh, T.B. Joshua, Bushili, and many that fall under that particular word, that particular caliber. Prophets in the Bible were handpicked by God. They didn't like the job. I have showed you the persecutions they went through. I have shown you from the scripture how they look at John the Baptist, how he was putting on. He was not actually like the modern day <laughs> pop star prophets that we do have, the likes of Mbonye. I'm telling you, all the Old Testament prophets, they prophesied in three time frames. They prophesied for their time. They also prophesied for the first coming of Christ. And they also prophesied for the second coming of Christ. The ones that we do have today, the modern day prophets, which time frame are they prophesying for? Because the canon of the scripture is closed. The book of Revelation shows us all the events that are going to take place one after another, one after another. All of it is well laid out in the 22 chapters of the book of Revelation, which the Bible is very clear in Revelation 22, 18 to 19. No one should add or subtract to any of these words of the word of the book of prophecy. And that if any does so, if any does so, the Bible says God will add to him the plagues described in that book of prophecy. So the ones of today, which time frame are you prophesying for? Because everything is within the 66 books of the Bible. And what is very outstanding that our New Testament fulfills and it shows us the fulfillment of many of the things that were said in the Old Testament. They are all being shown unto us in the New Testament. Then the ones of today, which time frame are you prophesying for? Because everything is made very clear. Remember, my dear ones, listen, the test of a true prophet in the Bible was his conformity to the word. And when you study the book of Isaiah, the chapter 8, verses 20, this is what it says in Isaiah 8, verses 20. It says that, uh, fact, let me begin with 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the teaching among my disciples. In verses 20 it says, To the teaching and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. That is ESV. But when you use the King James Version, it says, It is because there is no light in them. You that are listening to this teaching, any person that is not teaching, that is not conducting ministry according to what is written, just know they have no light in them. They are not true prophets. They have actually self-employed themselves. They have their own psychophants that have presented them there. A true minister of the Lord has nothing to say other than that which is in the scripture. Today, one desires the office of being a prophet or an apostle or pastor and join some prophetic school and learns how to prophesy and some, some pay money to become what they want and they ordained just like I've told you, with the Bethel School of Ministry, you pay some good dollars, they take you through some classes, they teach you how to make a prophecy. If you don't receive something, just make one. And then tomorrow you start the ministry, you also get spiritual signs, and then you also teach the same thing that you learned from a Bethel School of Ministry, and many here in our African countries today. And then you are a prophet. But the ones who are claiming that, they know nothing about the whole counsel of God's word. They know nothing about the, the right dividing of the scripture. They know nothing that is to do with Jude 3, which say that we should contend for the faith that was once given. They know nothing about the apostolic doctrine. They know nothing about the book of Revelation. How it warns people not to say something or to add anything that has already been given. You hear them say, I see something. I hear a sound. Actually, I had this dream, I had this vision and all of that. That is what you hear today that is very common. And people, hey, hey, because someone has put on a new suit, he has a lot of cars around, he has actually a huge following, there is money there. That is actually one thing that automatically validates that the Lord is with this person. But I'm telling you, even the 
followers themselves are being deceived as that individual is deceived. Remember what actually Paul warned the Corinthians about when he was telling them about some of the things that they had to be very careful about in First Second Corinthians 11, 13. He told them something that actually stands true also for the prophets. He said, for such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no wonder for certain himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. You think God does not see all of that coalition of the apostles? He seeth them. But there is that term of reckoning that, that actually awaits them. I'm telling you, my dear ones, Today, God is not speaking to anyone directly. I'm saying it again. God is not speaking to anyone directly by giving them new revelations. Whoever claims new revelation is self-deceived and those that follow him are actually also deceived. Isn't that the same warning that we have in 2 Timothy chapter 3 when Paul was talking about how the, the latter terms would appear like? In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 13 it says, But evil men... Talking about the modern day apostles, the modern day prophets, all of those that do not abide by that which is already written. He says one thing, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So if any person claims to have new revelation, he's not only self-deceived, but even if they that follow him are actually self-deceived, timers, a number that I may not be able to. To actually enumerate. It's what we are having. The scriptures are very much clear. The things that you and I should consider. As far as the standard. For the true prophets of God in the Bible. The number one thing that was actually very peculiar. There had to be moral integrity. All prophets of the Lord. They had to have what is known as moral integrity. You could not. Meet them in the thing of actually taking advantage of the poor one. You could not find them in sleeping with other poor wives. You could not find them in the issue of actually fleecing the poor ones, taking advantage of the online, taking advantage of the weak, and all of that thing of, of claiming whatever they were not. Moral integrity. Look at Jeremiah. Look at Ezekiel. Look at Daniel. Look at Amos. Look at Isaiah. These were fine men. Prophet Micaiah. They didn't go around announcing, you know, so and so is coming around, so and so holds a meeting every 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 Thursday, every Tuesday, every Saturday, every what and what. You can catch him here, you can catch him the other side and all of that. They were not trumpeters, they didn't go around boosting how they have this, they have this, and saying things that, that they were not sure the Lord was leading them to say. Moral integrity. But with this thing today that we are seeing, where even the list of the things that people do have, they want it. People who are thieves, bring all your tithes that we, we can teach you prophecy on demand. I hear seed faith. I hear the prophet is seed, allowing people to kneel before them, to kiss their rings, to kiss their shoes, to kiss their feet. I'm telling you, there is no any moral integrity with the modern day so-called prophets. They are not. They claim to prophesy in the name of Jesus of the Bible, but their lifestyle contradicts scriptures. There is no moral integrity with our modern day prophets. These are liars. These are people who are self-deceived. These are people that ascribe to themselves the power that was never given to them. And they are the ones who are making Christianity to appear like a household joke, but with a number of unlearned followers. Standard number two that has not been changed even in the, in the New Testament is what we call doctrinal orthodoxy. Doctrinal orthodoxy. Right doctrine. Sound doctrine. Every time you hear these people believing in issues to do with a positive confession, speaking things into existence, saying that they have unlimited faith, Saying that believers cannot fall sick. Saying that believers cannot face any physical challenge. Calling themselves little gods. Eh? You hear them say that. And then you hear them moving on with the idea of uh, 
promoting are here women apostles, women prophetess, and all of that. Just know that if their doctrine is wrong, even their prophecy cannot be true. I'm saying it again. If their doctrine is wrong, that simply means that even their prophecies cannot be true. When one's doctrine is wrong, even the prophecy is wrong. They only share their imaginations and they call it revelation from God. They call themselves prophetic snipers, yet they are seeing nothing. Their own thoughts, their own dreams, the sound in their mind is what they say it is prophecy. Moving around, studying people's information on Facebook, and now tomorrow they say that they are prophesying over your life. They have read everything concerning you. They know you meet in their fellowships. If it is Thursday, if it is Sunday, if it is Tuesday, if it is Monday, they have read a portion of that because you give details to them, your names and all of that. So they go onto your account, they read everything concerning you, and now someone comes closing, closing eyes that I have a prophecy for someone here called Martha Collins Rubega. And someone begins to say a lot of things, and then the poor girl begins to say, Amen, the Lord is in this place. And what is going to be left of that girl is only to do what? To give in even the little thing that she does have. To obey the so-called man of God. My dear ones, I want to let you know, I have no any heal thing against an individual. But one thing I want to make so very much clear, that controversy is necessary where the truth matters. Some of us say these things because others are not willing to say them. And the ones that took out Again, some of these particular things that are not aligning with the scriptures, they call us of the hate speech, fault finders, harass hunters, any kind and all of that. We need our believers to contend for the faith. We don't need our believers to be pretenders in faith. Right doctrine is very, very important. But I'm telling you, if people are wrong about some of these simple things, I cannot trust anything that actually they do say that it's actually from the Lord. The doctrine is very clear. The apostles and the prophets, they did their work. The offices are not in continuity. Then you say that you're a prophet. Then how should they relate with you? The third standard that has not changed, that actually started way back in the Old Testament, it is the issue of the revelatory accuracy. One is prophecy had to be 100% accurate. Remember, there is no taking retake in actual prophecy. If you are sure that it is the Lord who has given you that prophecy, it has to do what? It has to come to pass. In modern day, prophecy that we do have, there is no revelatory accuracy. And the scripture is very firm in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 18, verses 20. Maybe I'll, I'll end with that one just to make a concretization of my point here. It says in Deuteronomy, Chapter 18, the scripture is very clear, and I don't know how one can miss this, unless that person has a particular thing that is disturbing him. It says in 18, 20, But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, now listen, all of you that do follow particular prophets, I hear in some church there, I hear on a particular cable TV, I hear they do actually have a meeting nearby your home and all of that sort. Listen, how do you know? The true prophet. Bible says, But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. Oh, who speaks in the name of other gods, claiming to speak actually as being led by the Spirit of the Lord. That prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, it's an answer to all of us. This is a question we all have. This is a question that majority of the people would be having. How do I indeed know that this person, his called of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to him? The Bible says, and if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? It says in verse 22, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. That's why I'm not afraid of the modern day prophets. They are nobodies. Whatever they say, first of all, there is no moral integrity. 
There is no right orthodoxy. There is no revelatory accurate in what they are saying or prophesying. So they have nothing to put on the table. True prophecy, if there were 10 prophecies given to an individual, they had to be 10 out of 10, not a 9 out of 10. I mean a 9.5 out of 10. No, 10 out of 10, not 7 out of 10. Two out of that, that one will qualify an individual to be stoned. Today, what do we do? The scripture is very clear. It says in the book of Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Now I urge you, brethren, not those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Today we don't stone them. But what do we do? You disassociate from that man. You leave him with these suits. You leave him with these cars. You leave him with these followers. You leave him with these TV programs. You leave him with all of his titles of major one and all of that and the likes of uh, the most accurate prophet in the entire world. You leave him with all of his titles. Don't go near him. And what is very amazing that still I want to bring to your attention there are particular things God allows and uh, the false prophets and the false ministers for, tend not to understand it, that they are being set. Look at what happens. The Bible says something here. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, look at that. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and a sign and a wonder comes to pass, comes to pass, there is a possibility. Look at that. Of which he spoke to you, saying, let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them. Look at verse 3. You shall not listen to the word of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Some people, God just allows them to have particular things come to pass. But because God actually, that is how he exposes that false minister. And that is how he also picks out those that were genuinely following him. Those that are obedient to him that will not follow such a person. The rest who may not be knowing this that I have shared. They say, but he said this and this and it came to pass. The question is, how about the issue that is to do with this doctrine? Does it contradict the rest of the scripture? Okay, it has come to pass. But... How about his teachings? Do they agree? Because even the devil can give a prophecy to an individual and it comes to pass. But the doctrine of the devil cannot agree with the rest of what we have in the scriptures. So it's not one thing that you should look out for. It's not only the morality issue. It is not only the revelatory accuracy, but also the issue that is to do with the doctrine. Ah, me, I don't care about that. I have never had him in scandals. I've never had him in scandals. That one actually, according to what Kenneth, you've shown us, the guy is, is morally right. The guy is morally right. I know other things he has actually, he's wrong, but I'm telling you his morality is okay. Is it not true that having one piece can make him right? All of them have to be there. It's the Bible. And if you want to take issues with me, I'm telling you, I'm a wrong person that you should take issues with. Go to the word and see these things are there. I do not just have enough time to take you through the book of Jeremiah. But the book of Jeremiah is actually is so very much outstanding onto this issue. Let me just give you a test of this. Jeremiah 14, 14. It says, And the Lord said to me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to false visions, divinations, a worthless thing, and deceit of their heart. The Lord himself is renouncing and he says, I don't know those guys. I don't know. I don't even know where they are coming from. Where are they coming from? I do not know them. So that's the same thing you see in Jeremiah 23, 13. I have seen a folly in the prophets of Samaria. Now today, what folly are we seeing today? As far as the modern day prophets. They prophesied by Baal. Today, a lot of what we are having is witchcraft. They do not see the word of God being the sure word of prophecy. They do not see the scripture as being inherent, sufficient, and authoritative. They keep on saying new things. He has shown me this. He has shown me that. I didn't say, by Baal and cause my people of Israel to error. Today, do you think these guys are not leading many to error? People living anywhere they want, 
leading them to live in a life of actually covetousness. You think that is not error? Study Galatians 5, 19 to 20. Study 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to verses 10. Study the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 4 to verses 12. And see everything clearly. Study the book of actually Colossians 3. It says in verses 14, Also I have seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. I'm telling you, those prophets in the Old Testament, the false ones, are not any different from the ones that we have today who walk also in adultery and lies. They also strengthen the hands of the evildoers so that no one turns back from his wickedness. And all of them are like the Sodom to me and the inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with warm wood and make them drink the water of gall from the prophets of Jerusalem and the prophetess has gone out into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. That is what the Bible actually does, what it teaches. So I cannot go beyond this point, but what I can say to you, all of those that follow the false prophets, study the book of Revelation, the scripture is very clear. The two categories that will be thrown into the lake of fire, the Bible shows very much well what will happen. It talks about the Antichrist and the false prophet. Those are going to be the first ones to be thrown into the lake of fire. He that has ears to hear, please do hear. Don't follow those guys. First Timothy 4.16 says that if your teaching, when we are talking to Timothy, to, to take heed to his teaching and to continue in, in the true teaching. And if he had not continued in the true teaching, something else would happen. But the scripture says, continue in your teaching. For it to both serve you and those that hear you. So this is also to go to many that have been deceived, calling themselves prophets, having people who are following you. Please say the truth. You are not a prophet. If you're a businessman, and that is what you studied, go back into business. But even as you go back into business, don't sell all the products. Don't sell false pro products to people. Because that will again be sinning also again against God. But these issues of calling yourself prophets in the Bible does not actually stipulate or show us that the office of the prophet is a continuing office. I'm indeed very sorry for you, my dear one. Repent before it is too late. And all of you follow such people. Repent before it is too late. Shalom.